When was the last time you updated your resume? How about your LinkedIn profile? Come take a trip with me as we travel to a cybersecurity career marketplace known as CyberSN that is redefining passive recruiting for cybersecurity professionals and throwing the resume out the window. This is Ephemeral Security. Hello, would you please state your name and what you do? Deidre Diamond, founder and CEO of CyberSN and also founder of SecureDiversity.org. Great. Welcome to the show. Thank you. It's good to be with you. So I was looking at your history and it looks like you've been in the recruiting industry for quite some time. How has it evolved since you first started? Oh my gosh. You know, I started in January of 1994 to give some age right out of college and uh, resumes used to come in through the fax rolled up on paper, everybody, <laughs> literally. Oh, wow. And it would only come on Sunday because you can only post a job in the Sunday paper. There was no other place to post a job. So Monday mornings, you know, unrolling all the resumes. Uh, so that's how long I've been in recruiting. But I actually spent 13 years and then left and went into sales, software sales. That's how I got into security, which was Rapid7 as their first VP of sales taking that recruiting sales model and putting it into software. Uh, so that's the, the journey started a long time ago and you can only post in the Sunday paper. <laughs> nice. Yeah. What made you decide to disrupt the cybersecurity recruiting industry? Yeah. You know, so the fa- the people that hired me right out of college and I was at Motion Recruitment for 13 years, which is now a billion dollar plus firm. Those founders, I worked for them for 21 years across three different companies. Rapid7 was their, the second company I went to and then a third. But anyhow, uh, I left staffing, staffing after 13 years and then did 10 years of software sales and leadership and CEO of a software company and, uh, and then came back to recruiting. So I, basically, I left recruiting during the digital era because like, when I left recruiting, we weren't even using computers. We had like one of those big old Macs that had all the colors in the middle of the team for like a few months before I left recruiting. So uh, so coming back and then deciding to found my own company after 21 years working for them and them having retired, uh, I thought, oh my gosh, you know, I love the security space. I'm a sociologist, criminal justice by school. And uh, and so, uh, and I really enjoyed staffing. We, you know, people really were so, um, you know, just emotionally thankful for the help and the support that we gave. I really loved that. So, so I decided to put the two together and, oh my God, Steve, I wasn't, I wasn't in business a week before I was like, oh my gosh, you can't, I can't make a match. Like, you know, like a resume meant nothing. And, and, and mostly it was due to um, a common language issue for sure, which is in security, but it's also everywhere. I mean, yeah, IT software, it doesn't matter. But also because of all this SEO game that everybody has to play and you have to put your keyword searches 10 to 15 times in every job posting. And I'm now writing these job postings that, you know, who's going to read them? Everybody's passive, you know? And so my brain just started going about, oh my God, this is so broken. And hey, by the way, this is a national security issue that we can't, you know, find each other easily. Right. Uh, You know? And so with my 10 years of software years, my brain just started going like one was just to exist and make enough money to employ people and actually be able to support this community. And then the next phase was like, wow, well, holy moly, I've got this great answer here that's working for CyberSN and we're growing at scale every year thanks to our taxonomy and our platform. I got to open it to the world. And that's, you know, because that's really the disruption, you know, is to is to be able to allow everybody to work with the same common language and post their jobs in a way that people can understand them and get resumes in you know, what we call profiles that are using that same common language because just that piece was so much noise that I I knew instantly that this is why people aren't being retained too, is that there's a lot of mismatching going on because people are settling. Either the professional who's job searching and, you know, hiding behind their employer's back feeling terrible about that for months at end. And then the, the employer interviewing for months and months and months while work's not getting done. And, you know, eventually it's not like anybody even consciously says I'm settling. They settle. 
And that's why the retention statistics are so terrible too. So all of that, I just saw it instantly. You know, I did 13 years of literally running an army of, you know, 36 million by the time I was 25, I was running, you know, a perm. This isn't contract work, by the way. This is perm. You know, it's a totally different business line. There's no reoccurring revenue and, you know, it's a one-time deal. So, so I, you know, have that operation experience from the past that I couldn't replicate and needed to replicate in order to be successful and also saw that the industry was struggling so much you know professionals like yourself looking for a job is a nightmare and, and yeah it, it really hard. is it sounds like you're talking almost it almost sounds like you're talking about matchmaking yeah yeah so you know i um a lot of you know where talent meets is our match was a was a tagline that we used for a very very long time and it's still a part of what we do we're now making it we're using pwn your career so that we people understand we have more for you than just the job we have so that's a good tagline by the way oh good thank you our cso came up with it for maybe three or four years ago as a title to a talk that i did it submitted at rsa that got selected he's 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 lovely with that and he's also the behind the content he's been with us five years now him and his team uh you know of the taxonomy so so you know really the idea of matchmaking minimally to that the interview is a valid interview you know that's the minimum criteria that i was so, so that nobody's interviewing somebody and it's like yeah they're not even close to the job which happens all day long to everybody out in the industry right but then the matchmaking was like retention matchmaking, you know? So eHarmony, I, I found fascinating as associate, you know, sociologist in my brain. Anyways, I'm constantly thinking about society and divorce rates and how awful they, they, they were before the digital era. And look what E, I don't know if you know, but eHarmony completely disrupted those divorce rates because their matches and what they were doing and matches was so significant that people, they were actually good matches. And so it turns out we just did all our retention data for seven years. We're going to be putting it in Snowflake and some other places, certainly all over our website. And um, we have people that are still employed from our first year in business. Oh, wow. That's great. Lots of them, Steve. The the stats are showing that we're, our people are staying 53% longer. Oh, that's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah, that means more happiness because we just said that like, if you're job searching, it's not a happy time. You have to hide. You have to, you know, you're probably feeling, somebody's probably feeling not so good. It's just terrible. So to, and somebody that worked for the same people for 21 years, that people that, you know, work in cultures I, I'm a part of leading, I want them to stick around, you know, so it matters to me and it is, it is matchmaking. And, you know, hopefully what will end up happening even, even more so is, you know, the ability to uh, help people make matches on even, you know, personalities <laughs> too. Oh, that'd be, that'd be interesting. Like, oh yeah. Wow. It's like, maybe I need so many like A's or B's or C's or I don't know. I need like ENTFJs or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The Myers-Briggs stuff. It's interesting because I, we just talked about eHarmony. I'm in conversations with the founder of the matching technology for eHarmony. His name's Oh, Gaylen. interesting. We are at the MOU stage actually for creating uh, something that is with my EQ business skills that I've developed that he finds fascinating and cutting edge, uh, coupled with baselining what it means to have a profile or a resume or a job description, which is that taxonomy. You put those two things together and we can start to help people understand maybe what roles would be better suited for them. So, you know, we've, we were the founders of the 45 job categories, the 10 actual roles. So compliance, defense, attacking, management, you know, like where so many entry levels don't know which way to go. Right. They come into security. They don't know what jobs to look for. And then they interview and people are like, oh, well, you don't know what you want to do. So it's not a good fit for us. That's what right. happens all day long. So I want to solve that and help. And then there's also things we can do for those that have experience, not to judge ourselves or to say that you shouldn't hire somebody. I'll never let that content be used for that. More to empower ourselves to understand ourselves so that we can understand how we interact, so that we can have happier work lives. Like all of that matters. It just does. So in fact, I just came out of a meeting with our a uh, product leader who used to be our uh, cloud security engineer years ago, who, you know, came here because of the product. And he was sharing with me a meeting I gave four years ago. He's hiring his team and he's showing me some of the things he he's putting in front of them that 
and that's you know sort of the 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 code of of happiness. It's it, it, you know is within understanding how we interact, not to change it, but to know it right. is is powerful. And and he was talking about how how he you know had twenty years before he came to Cyber SN five years ago and never learned these things and how it's been the most powerful thing for him and he's so excited to be giving it to his team and so. I, I think between, you know, what I already know and have with what Galen, you know, who did the matching for match.com, we can do some cool stuff that doesn't say you're, you're good or you're bad for this job or this person, none of that. It's more empowering. But I think on the entry level stuff, we can do a little bit more of, you should consider these roles versus right. these roles, you know? Uh, so I'm super excited about that. Have you thought about, uh, I mean, I don't know what your guys' roadmap looks like, but I was just thinking, like, I know I've worked with some firms where they'll actually do, uh, they'll, they'll record responses to certain questions. So a particular company might mm-hmm. want to know, like, what what a person, for example, thinks DevOps, DevOps is or DevSecOps is, and then they would record the response of the, uh, the, the person submitting the position. But it would, it kind of gives the, employer more of a sense of like what that person's like, uh, how well they communicate, things like that to make a better match. I, I don't know if that's something you guys have thought about at all or. Yeah. You know, I haven't, ex- I haven't experienced that. I would lo- I would love to hear people that have experienced it. Um, well, I, I was a hiring manager and it was amazing. So like I, at a previous company, I was trying to hire a DevOps engineer. I gave the company my three questions and then they would ask all the candidates those right. three questions and then they would record their response. And it was like the, the the person would see it on the screen and then they had to respond right then. So they couldn't like really prepare their answer. It was kind of like a real interview almost. But like, yeah, I would just watch, yeah. you know, watch five or six candidates, their videos. And then I'd be like, oh, that's the guy. That's the guy I want to hire right there. And so right. it was like, it was obvious. And so then I didn't waste my time with like a bunch of hour long interviews. Um, I got to do the, just the interview that I, need to, that I needed to do. That's interesting. I really like that idea because it's, it's so here's how I would look at it. And what first went to my brain was, so there's, there's two parts of a match. One is not wasting time talking to people that the hiring manager wouldn't have as a possibility or the professional wouldn't make the opportunity as, as a, as a, as a possibility. That's one part of the match. And right now that's where the biggest noise is, is, right. Because all that wasted time of it's not even close conversation for one or the other or both. Uh, so, so, so what I have today is anybody I match you with, it's not going to be a wasted conversation, but what you're talking about is almost to make the match almost without interviewing somebody, right? Which means the interview is sort of on a video or at least the initial screening interview that you yeah, still like have the to pre-screening do. one. Yeah. yeah. As a hiring manager, you still have to do it. And so automating that to a few questions is and, and recording it is interesting because we do that with our clients and I would hope that any internal recruiting department would do that. So, Hey, you're my hiring manager, Steve. I, I go do the matching, you know, at CyberSN, and we get down to, you know, five people. And then, you, you know, you've given us three questions. Well, we'll, we'll use that to make sure that all five are submittable. If not, it's three or two, but if to, we're not recording and I, that's quite interesting. It's an interesting one. Uh, yeah, I'll bring it back to the team. It is nice to see people on video. I'm a big fan. So, you know, you can tell a lot of communication versus just words. Right. Uh, you know, so uh, I think that that, I think, you know, to me, that's the supporting the actual, we we say, we're, we're going to find, we're going to make a match on qualified and interested. Qualified right. and interested. Like they're qualified and they're interested. You decide which one. You know, and then that which one of, let's say, five, I could see a recruiter and a hiring manager having that sort of a dynamic and using some recording of a video. Because if they're, because you got to make sure they're interested because nobody's going to record the video. <laughs> you know? Yeah, that, that, that's would, true. Well, <laughs> it, it, maybe it'd be something like, you know, if you want to make yourself stand out or something, you could a- answer yeah. these questions or something. Yeah, it could also uh, really amplify somebody that is interested which means your job description has to be done really, really well. If you're going to do that, no touch, you know, no, a recruiter or, or a hiring manager doesn't have to speak to the person, 
Uh, and that's ultimately what we're doing is that searching and matching qualified and interested. And then if you, when you want, you know, uh, to do, to make sure you hire somebody, you, you as the hiring manager or your recruiters better know how to, you know, actually interview somebody and knowing the questions to ask are, is, is critical, you know, super critical. Right. So do, do you guys provide any, any, any guidance on that or like what, I guess, what's the experience look like for somebody who is looking for a job and then also someone who is, has a job that they, that they're looking for a candidate. Has a job, but, um, from, from the employer side and then the, the prospective employee side, like what's the experience on the site? Yeah. So the, the, the cyber said marketplace is designed for cybersecurity professionals and employers can definitely, you know, get tremendous value. My point is that what we're doing is saying, look, we all got to be in one place or this is never going to change, you know? So if you all, if we all need to be in one place, meaning all cyber professionals, then I got to provide something that gives you the, everything you need in one place, or we're never going to get these employers to comply. We have 500,000 open roles, but only whatever my site says, what is it? 62,000 today. We pull it in and we scrape it every day. Only 62,000 posted. It's because it doesn't work. So if, if professionals who have experience, again, this is not entry level today, we don't serve entry level, but have some experience, even six months is enough, can categorize themselves in a way and jobs can be categorized themselves in a way and we can make that noise, then it's all gone. So the idea is make a public profile. It's confidential. So I know that security professionals don't want necessarily have LinkedIn profiles. I have some of my defense team, they don't have LinkedIn profiles. They don't want their uh, identity out there. My CSO needs it because he's interacting with clients or, you know, what have you. But most security professionals don't want a public profile. Uh, they don't want their information out there. So the idea is, okay, well, let's, we don't, I don't need to know who you exactly are. So have a public confidential profile where employers can see your profile and knock on your door. But also when you do want a job search, you have the ability to make the matching. And so, uh, you know, the marketplace sets up for sure jobs and, and every job is in the marketplace. And then it's the career support, how mapping of, of, of job roles, certifications, salary, uh, all of the support of events and anything that let's say a cyber professional would need buying software, buying services. We want it all in one place. So you can categorize like, you know, think of, I think of it as like search engine for just us of anything we need in our careers so that we don't make our lives easier. And then for the employer, you can post your jobs that people actually reply to, you know, um, use that job description to, make sure that everybody in the org's on the same page. I mean, it's so game changing with that. My clients tell me all the time, DJ, your jobs actually get, save us so much time because everybody's on the same right. page and I can get funding for my jobs because of the way my jobs look like on, you know, when I make them in your platform, which is free, which is why I made that free because of all the years of my clients telling me that it's, that's why they got that job funded or they were able to use the job description as a review cycle at 30 days, 90 days, six months. And then if the person's tasks or projects change, they just go into and fix it, you know, change it in the job, uh, in our platform, excuse me, and then export it again. And so people are using this also for reviews. I mean, there is no greater, uh, you know, tool than to know what everybody's doing every day, you know, in an org. It's the number one problem that organizations have to performance measure, never mind reviews and everything else. So so employers have all of that plus the data, the career data, like how to how to grow your security engineer, what or your security professionals, what career pathing and salary, you know, accurate salary, by the way. Yeah, could like, you talk about the salary? Course, I was really surprised yeah. to see like a little salary slider on your site and that they that I guess the for, for the jobs that the uh, employers were, were open about, like what the range yeah. was and everything. Yeah. This is just the beginning, by the way. So we looked into, you know, paying for Glassdoor's content and what that content was. And what I realized is they're scraping job postings, right? It's And, uh, and so for sure, our data is, you know, the data that is actually happening out in the world, you know, what we're placing people at and what people are, paying and when we're taking jobs descriptions and and what we coach them on that's this data right 
So, you know, um, that being said, we're going to, you know, we're going to take it to a greater level because this is just salary, right? We really, I mean, salary alone could mean nothing depending on what else is in the package, i.e. Uh, bonus, stock options, sure. you know, uh, training commitments, right? Opportunity, like, you know, salary alone is, uh, you know, not, not, not the best thing to be only so thinking So you're saying about. you guys are going to enhance it beyond salary? Yeah, we're going to do all of it. We're actually, so not just the, the data we have, but we're going to certainly anonymously ask everybody to participate. We need to know. I've been out for the last three years telling everybody on the East Coast, look, the people on the West Coast, they're making seven figure packages and nobody on the East Coast knows it. Right. And if, and, and, and it isn't, I'm not telling everybody for any other reason than money is necessary in this capitalistic environment that our houses and our food source rely on, which makes me crazy, which is why I expose the content. But like, who knows? You know, like, I mean, I guess we all knew Silicon Valley paid stock options, but did you know they're paying them to security engineers? You know, <laughs> did you know they're paying to DevSecOps? Did you the seven figures? Like, I don't think so. I don't think people know. So, you know, what is that data? And who is buying certifications and at what level and, and what have you, you know? Like, so here's the other part of the data I can't wait to release. So that 53% stat of staying longer, huh? it's super obvious that those people are also being supported. They're getting new certifications. They're getting more exposure. They're getting promoted. They're getting, right? Like they're moving forward in their career. So of course they're staying. Why wouldn't they stay? You know, and it is the number one reason people leave is that they're not advancing. They're not growing. There's nobody's investing in them. It's the number one thing. Yeah. So, you know, to be able to correlate that with data instead of just telling my clients, <laughs> you know, it's going to be much easier. So are you saying that candidates will know if a particular role will offer like ongoing training and things like that? Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. That's we need to have that. We need company. I think that those companies that are willing to commit. So we don't put that in the job description today, but any of our clients, it's a must. Like we're not even working the job. I won't. What? Are you serious? Like we're short 500,000. Everybody's working. Nobody, nobody really believes that like the grass is greener unless you're coming at them with, you're going to put your training in, you know, it's going to be a part of our conversation that you're going to, you're in the interview process and in the offer stage. Like if our clients aren't willing to engage that story, have it ironed out, even if we have to do it with them, then they're not a client. It's not, it would be a waste of our time, nor do we pref want to be a part of promoting such ridiculousness. You know, like who doesn't need the training? Right. It makes me, it's not even possible for a cyber professional to grow without it. And unfortunately, and there's an economic barrier that is yeah, massive. And it's getting bigger and bigger, this economic barrier. Like these shirts aren't getting less, you know, at Black Hat, we started a um, we started a, a campaign, which was make a profile and be a part of winning up to five thousand in certification vouchers. Meaning, pick whatever institute you want. We'll call them and we'll get you a gift card. Um, you know uh, the 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 idea that was, so so our CSO when we were looking at how much money to put up there, he went to just see what a cloud security certification is, and he was thinking it'd be around. Uh, 4,500. And so 5,000 would be fine because I was going with 5,000 and maybe it's one person that wins or whatever. Well, it turns out it's 7,000 and some change. He was blown away. You know, like it's getting more expensive. That was just three weeks ago. Yeah, I guess you know, I guess it depends. We some of them, like the SANS ones are extremely expensive, but like the AWS ones, they're around like 300. Uh, but then, then there's all the training that also comes with it too. So I think SANS includes the training. So maybe that's the part that I don't know. Yeah, yeah, maybe that's the part I don't know enough myself. But I, you know, that is something that we're moving into, which is, you know, having relationships with all of these training institutes such that we can buy bulk and uh, give back to the community through, you know, things that we want to do, i.e. maybe even open source. We're, you know, all this is still in, in talks. But look, this is self-funded. There's no VCs here. There's no nothing. So, uh, uh, you know, at heart, it's because I really believe it makes a difference. But also, I love changing the game. So the idea is that 
we truly completely changed this game. And part of the game means that if you're a cybersecurity professional and you're, let's say you're a contractor, why, why are staffing agencies making all this money by you going to work year after year? It's blows my mind. I'm not a contract shop. We do contract for our clients. I come from perm having understood all of that. It makes me nutty. So how do we make it so that the platform can provide what it needs to be provided and give the money back to the professionals? <laughs> you know, like there has, we have to transform that too. I mean, it's right. just, I don't know if you know what that whole world looks like, but it would make you feel sick if you knew. Well, I mean, sometimes uh, internal recruiting at companies just can't get the job done. Uh, hiring managers might, might wait months for a qualified candidate and then they slip through their fingers. But if you work with some headhunters, you get qualified candidates like right away. So I, there's, there's definitely a reason I think that, you know, that that happens, but if there, there is a better way, uh, I'm sure hiring managers would, would be open to it. Right. Well, it, I'm talking about, um, contractors, not permanent. And, oh, and okay. sorry. yeah, that's where the money is, you know, day, you know, hourly monthly, yearly, for as long as the person's employed, there's a, you know, slice of that hourly rate that goes to the staffing agency. And the only reason Oh, that, that's right. Okay. That, the only reason that exists is in the late nineties when the tax laws were changed and, you know, OPEX and CAPEX meant different write offs. Well, that's when the whole contract staffing agency business just blew up because now, you know, employers didn't want people on their paper because you know uh, they they didn't get the tax write offs and now you know so so the staffing agencies put them on their paper for a fee, for an hourly fee forever, <laughs> you know and I'm not saying there isn't some search and match cost but it doesn't equate, you know right and it, then and then if you wanted to convert that contract to full time wasn't there also like a price or something for that too? Depending on the 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 agency, but yes, yes, okay, yeah, yes. you know, now I know what you're talking about and like yeah I think when I was at uh i was working at a, at a government facility and it was like the the contracting agencies they charge the the same price basically for all the contractors but then they give the contractors a different amount uh yeah. based on what they negotiated <laughs> that's kind of weird yeah. yes yes and you know again why is all that happening well part of it is the search and match and the part of it is just who's who's the employee of record or employer of record well cybersn platform can be the employer of record and we can stop this madness of you know, like people making more money for you going to work than you make for going to work. That's actually happening. Right. Which is nutty. Uh, so, you know, that's more long-term, uh, not long-term, but longer-term road roadmap. When I look at the industry it's, as a whole, I see contract work coming more and more. I, in fact, I think it's one of the answers to, you know, just getting more done faster is for us to be able to chunk up this work a little uh, versus, um, you know, sort of not really understanding the tasks and the projects that need to get done, which is why the taxonomy helps everybody so much, you know, that makes sense. Yeah. So are there other passion projects you have? Well, securediversity.org is a passion project in that, you know, five years ago, I realized I didn't recognize, I didn't know I represented the 1% of women, you know, founding CEOs, Never mind before that as an executive in tech for the majority of my career, very quickly being in the 5% and like, wow, holy moly. And then of course, seeing that we don't have enough people in cyber and somebody that didn't come up through tech being trained. And, and, and so secure diversity was, was born of like, oh my gosh, I have to help. We have to, we have to, uh, you know, show women that these jobs can be for them. It also helped them achieve uh, getting in, but also, you know, at the same time, making sure they're successful once they get in, which is what took me to the EQ training. So the Secure Diversity does lots of things to help women come in, but also all genders on the EQ side so that we can work well together. <laughs> uh, and so um, super proud of that. Day of Security, I don't know if you've heard it, is one of the bigger events that we put on. And we just had our sixth annual in May. It was uh, 1,200 1, women um, around the world, 112 speakers, red team, blue team, management, and EQ, and all women. Oh, wow. Were, um, the instructors. And it's free. 
it's a free conference. It's never taken money nor uh, anything else. And so, and then part of negotiating all those packages with training institutes, both for CyberSN and also for secure diversity so that we can provide the training. And so I'm super passionate about that. Um, and then and super passionate about yoga and hiking. Nice. <laughs> Those are my two outlets. So, what, so what, what's EQ? Emotional intelligence and the skills, the emotional intelligence business skills. So win-win communication, right? Um, making uh, measurable agreements, managing measurable agreements, working a calendar, lean language. Um, these are these are courses and trainings that I've ma- you know mastered certainly uh, you know hold myself to and others and they're valuable. They work. They're a reason why I believe I was able to be that one person is because I was trained on these things. They weren't necessarily called them necessarily, but I was trained on them walking out of college by those two serial entrepreneurial founders, which were men, by the way, that I worked for for 21 years. And I walked into that kind of a training program that gave me lean language and win-win. Now, all those things I mentioned, which traditionally was for salespeople, which is what I was deemed, right? Uh, And- You know, now fast forward, we're in a world of service, all of us servicing each other as teammates and working together. It's like everybody needs these skills. Yeah. So everybody does. In fact, we're we're creating a Cyber SN EQ certification. Oh, cool. That's great. And I'm going to provide it myself. So, uh, so yeah, that's what that is. And it's super powerful. That's why also, I think I mentioned to you maybe when we were not recording that I'm kicking off anonymous job talk with Deidre Diamond, and I'm going to incorporate those EQ, emotional intelligence, business skills into me giving coaching advice for, you know, challenges people are having conflict. I want, you know, like literally conflict with Mm -hmm. a boss, a peer, a coworker, whoever. It really is and can be made simple, these solutions. Do you ever incorporate any Dale Carnegie type stuff? I I kind of feel like there's some overlaps with Dale Carnegie's and emotional intelligence. You know, I'm not as educated there. I know a little bit, but so no, I just wrote it down. I'll check it out. Yeah, it's the How to Win Friends and Influence People. Yeah. It's a really great book. It's, It's a very old book. Yeah. It really helped me in terms of, just professionally, how, how to navigate coming out of the nerdery, right? <laughs> if you're able to, because yeah. you have to be able to, com- so much of information security is actually trying to get other teams to do something yes. uh, and for them to want to work with you. So you have to know uh, how to talk to people, right? And how to, how to make them want to do something. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I totally know that book. It is wonderful. And you just made me um, think about how you know, it's, it's books like that, or just even training like that, that I want also in the, I don't want just our stuff, my stuff. I want the, you know, any powerful emotional intelligence skills content to be there. Again, I am not, I am committed to a one stop place for anything poning one's career. And so we just started, you know, telling all the software companies, service companies, EQ people, training companies, like be here, we'll make you searchable, which by the way, based on functional roles. So, you know, let's make the training institute searchable by functional roles. Let's make the product company searchable by functional roles. If I'm an application security person, I want to know all the AppSec products like in one place, you know? And uh, so, so that's what we're doing. And, and so, you know, books like that, we must and uh, have in, and so, you know, I'm going to add to the to the request form of like, anybody's got, you know, request to have certain information here, please tell us because, you know, Myers-Briggs, like you mentioned earlier, I think it's tremendous, you know, why not have an, a, a something there? Situational leadership, tremendous. Servant uh, leadership too. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, I, I want everything in one place. So we've, we've just begun that journey of, you know, sort of all those other add-ons beyond one's job search. Uh, and it's going to go quick and we're super excited about it. Cool. I, so I did have one uh, other thought about CyberS, and I, I realized that sometimes for me too, it's like just because I've done something in the past doesn't mean I want to keep doing it. Uh, eventually, people get bored doing the same thing. And so maybe somebody who is doing DevOps wants to go into penetration testing. And so maybe there uh, there is a role where they're looking for somebody who has DevOps skills, 
that would like to get more into penetration testing. And so the training might be offered on that. And then eventually they could transition to that as opposed to being stuck in DevOps forever. Right. Uh, so that was kind of tricky, but yeah, well, that's why the percentage breakdown of both on your profile of how you're spending your time and also the job descriptions, the percentage of time associated is critical because again, there's one, we're cutting down the noise, but by on the back end, we've worked in logic that says if I've been doing DevSecOps 60% of the time for five years, you know, or three years or two years, you know, whatever it is that it's more like three to five, uh, then I'm probably going to be looking for less DevSecOps, you know, and more something else. And so it's, it, we're going to still match you to the jobs where the percentages may, may be equal, but that's going to be lower on the list. The things that are going to be higher on the list are the things that do take into account, our matching does take into account, it's time to do something great. And so we look at that. I mean, that's, it's, it's a reflection of literally how recruiting works. Like, but you have to ask somebody the question, well, how much time and how long have you been doing specifically X, Y, and Z? And we have to verbally ask that. That's what, why our profiles are replacing resumes. We don't, we don't want that verbal ask. It's too time consuming for everybody. You can't possibly go on enough phone calls to have to do that, you know, uh, and so as a professional. And so we start there when we've got you know, our secret sauce for sure behind the matching of, yeah, somebody that's been doing something X time is probably ready for Y and what the diff what's the typical movement in these functional roles, which is why, you know, this is also built by security professionals. I mean, Dom Glavich and Eric Ligda, our chief security officer and CTO and, and his head of product, they were both have been here five years. They're behind that content. I'm behind the recruiting, like how we used to do this before the digital era and disrupted everything and made content useless. By the way, the jobs on Sunday paper in 1994 and until it stopped were $5,000. Oh, wow. That's incredible. And that was 1994. So content used to have value in print. Right. Now that it doesn't, we have all these just everybody cutting and pasting everybody's jobs. There's just no value to it, too. Never mind the common language problem. Yeah. So so the percentage breakdown in the profiles and in the job description and then our secret sauce of matching helps with that tremendously. What about the the title? So sometimes like mm. I, mean, I, I was interviewing somebody, it was like for a, a cloud security engineer. And he was like, the first question he asked me, he's like, like, what does a cloud security engineer mean to your company? Because, and I told him, and he's like, okay, that's what I thought it was. He said, other companies like want me to make dashboards and stuff. And like, in my <laughs> mind, that's not what a cloud security engineer is. Um, so like, do you have for companies that want to name roles, certain things, do you say, oh, we actually call that role this and, yes. and, and that's what it is? Yeah, so we have um, done all the due diligence of scraping not only everything that's ever been posted, but everything that we've seen, and we've picked the job titles that make sense that people like. And you know, you have to, you you know, there's we went from what was it seven hundred, you know, something, <laughs> you know, to uh, we're a little about one hundred and thirteen, uh, and so. Those titles, those are the titles. That's what's on the job description. If you need to have something different down in human resources, that's a different game. But in terms of recruiting, you need to be very clear uh, on the title or people aren't going to respond to your job. And again, that's the name of this game is that let's let's take out all this noise. Like, why can't we go back to the days where, like when I came in on sun, from Monday morning from Sunday, those people were qualified and interested. Because I paid five thousand dollars to write that ad, I was very clear of what I had to offer. I was very clear of what the job was, and and so people were qualified, and interested. So you know, you can almost say I have I'm recreating what used to be a paper experience where content had value. Five thousand dollars that'd be like fifteen thousand today based on the value of the dollar. Yeah, you know? that's true. Right. Definitely. I mean, it was super expensive. Uh, so, so, uh, I think that, um, you know, titles matter to people too. I don't agree when people say titles don't matter. I mean, it's like, what are you talking about? Your livelihood's tied to the title, <laughs> you know, like how does that not matter? So I think they matter they need to be concise and clear. And if you've got something else going on in HR, but that is necessary based on being a big company and salary bands and okay, great. Keep it there. 
you know, don't make the person have it on their offer letter. Don't make them have it on their LinkedIn profile. <laughs> like it doesn't work. It matters. When we went away from, let's say, people going to Blockbuster, right? And we mm. moved to like the online video world. Uh, I know there are certainly some stragglers uh, who, who who clung to their videotapes, but, you know, there's like the early adopters um, and there are some people, uh, at least I think, that might still be like, well, but I have a resume. Like, how do I give you my resume? And so like, how do, what, what do you do to help coach those people to help them yeah. understand that maybe they don't need a resume or is it they can still submit the resume, but really you guys are going by the taxonomy and are you guys going to unpopulate taxonomy? or maybe give suggestions or how's that work? I'm glad you said that because people are a I, what I say attached to their resume because they put so much work into it. It's almost like, what do you, how could I not need my resume now? It's been the source of like, you know, major trauma for me. Every, yeah. the you know, cost uh, or like, or how do they show off like what they can do if they, yeah. if they can't, you know, show yeah. they can write a proper resume. Yeah. I don't know. yeah. So what I tell people all the time is this, first of all, um, you know, use the taxonomy, recreate your resume. We call it a profile, export it and use it because you still have to submit places for sure. Of course, in the platform, you don't have to, but if you decide you want to submit somewhere else, you're going to have to, in the platform, you can uh, use your profile. And, and we do have all jobs there that you can apply from. But the idea is that again, you're right. We have to change our mind, our perspective. Resumes aren't working. This isn't working. None of this is working. So um, let's just rethink what a resume is, add the taxonomy. If you want to put the, you know, the about me and the, you know, the beginning or what have you, great. But at the end of the day, you still have to meet people. And the number one way to sell yourself is in person. And so we want to get those in-person meetings happening. That's the that's the number one way versus a piece of paper or even a digital profile selling. It's it's to get to that first conversation, and then you're gonna tell them other things about you and sell yourself and what have you. But putting everything in the resume, everything without putting how much time you're spending doing, you know, is just it's not working. So let's let's make it literally the things you're doing, how much time you're spending with them. And then when you talk to them, sell them on the other things, like maybe um, clubs that you're involved in, or, you know, organizations that you're involved in or open source projects or what have you. Like, right. Right. It's, it's, we want to make the qualified and interested happen digitally, you know, or, or, you know, from the marketplace versus, you know, the idea of um, a resume needs to, to, to be uploaded and, you know, gone into, nobody even knows what it says and it's on some database and not searchable because you're not doing those things anymore six months later or a year later, you know? Right. But I guess, I guess I think the problem is that you can't use resumes for matching. You can use taxonomies for matching, but once the match happens, but before you talk with them, it's good to get to, I mean, for me, like as a hiring manager, I would, I might, I still want to, would, would want to read something like, okay, they have these skills, but I want to know like how they use them and like, maybe like what the result was. Um, mm-hmm. And so I guess I could you know, ask them that in person, but it is still nice to be able to, to, to read that they did XYZ project. They rolled out, let's say vulnerability management uh, to, to their, to their company, right. Or something like yeah. that, as opposed to just saying, oh, they have vulnerability management for two years. Like did like yeah. what were they just, were they just doing it day to day or do they actually implement it like that kind of stuff that that this be yeah. my questions I don't know yeah so in the platform when you post your job if a professional applies to it which means they say they send their profile and they say hey I'm interested in your job you can respond and ask them a few questions I mean there's a whole communicator in the platform whoa wait wait you're saying that you can actually communicate with yeah I didn't candidates? know you did no <laughs> I, I did not know that. know that no no that's amazing. Yikes. Yes, we, we, you know, uh, we've got some pages to add clearly, but, uh, anyhow, yes, there's a whole communicator. You can talk to the person right there. You can ask them questions. They can ask you questions. Yes. Yes. It's the same. It's the same thing cyber SN is using. It's the same thing. So when you apply to a cyber SN job, we're working for a client, we're going to communicate back and forth with you. It's the same. It's the, the, anybody that posts a job gets to do the same thing. That's why, you know, 
the pricing is super cheap right now, but it needs not to be. It makes me a little nutty that the intro price is, you know, everybody believes should be what it is. But for me, it's like major value I'm giving. Well, very- I mean, it, it might almost be like one of those things where you need to like give them like, oh, well, the first few candidates are free or something, right? And then <laughs> yeah. you know, once they realize they really like the platform, once you've got them on the hook, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 that's true. That's a good point. But yeah, you can totally communicate uh, with the professionals that apply to your job for sure. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Next time you have an opening on your team, post a job. <laughs> well, it's so we'll deep, check it's it out. Not even fun. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's 250 a month per job, uh, which is, you know, uh, a nice, if, if somebody knows how to respond to people and has the EQ skills of, you know, you can fill jobs. That would make sense. Like, so, I mean, I, I don't have a lot of, I don't have experience at like, I've never been a recruiter. I've just been a hiring manager, but I would think that if like one of my internal recruiters like sent me, let's say a, a cyber SN link and I could communicate with prospective candidates uh, interactively to send the messages or something that might be more helpful. It would save me more time than having mm-hmm. to go to a one hour interview and know within like the first five minutes that they are not a fit. Um, yeah. So that I could certainly see that being helpful. It'd be, I mean, everyone likes saving time. So. Heck yeah. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, you know, we, we, we don't even let a first interview be an hour, but it's a whole, that's a whole nother conversation. Cause you know, personality clicking matters and you know, like you just said, as I do pretty quickly too. So uh, yes, there's a communicator and it's got a lot of value there. Great. Well, thank you very much for telling us all about cyber SN and the other stuff that you're into. We really appreciate it. Yeah, I really appreciate professionals like you engaging in this conversation because it is really the community together. We, If we're all in one place, all employers will comply. And that's the message, the call to arms that I'm saying to everybody, you know, and it's there's no cost and I'm not, you know, seeking to do anything other than change this. As somebody who worked for people for 21 years, I it, it just breaks my heart to watch what's going on. And yeah, it's it, it's it's really broken, and the cybersecurity industry is so specialized. There's so many different nuances to it that it's not like with with developers, you're like, oh, okay, I'm a developer, I develop in this, and that's you know pretty much it. But like with security, there's there's so many different parts to it, and you can and they touch so many different things. It's really hard to like properly align the resume with the job, and I think it's 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 sad. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Make a profile, export it, and you'll have a resume that uh, is much better. Never mind, have the platform to to find jobs. So I'm so thankful for you taking the time, Steve, truly. Let's keep in touch because we're releasing stuff all the time. Like this isn't going to stop. I'm I'm going full force, game changing, not ending. (laughs) (laughs) So let's keep in touch. Let's keep uh, meeting up on new releases and such. Definitely. Thank you. And so for our listeners, uh, that's the word cyber and then S as in Sierra and N as in November.com, cybersn.com. Thank you to our guest, Deidre Diamond, for being here today. Special thanks to Margo Stormbreaker for the theme music. And remember, folks, don't click links you receive from strangers and text messages or you're going to have a bad day. <laughs>